Welcome to the Core Getting Started collection. In this video, we will teach you methods of creating elements and relationships. There are two primary ways to create elements and relationships. First is a data-centric method. Second is a diagram-centric method. For the data-centric method, anytime you see a class folder, you can simply double-click on that class folder to create an element. You'll get a dialog that allows you to name the element. Here, you can use the default name or enter your own. I'll name my element Making Coffee and click OK. To create a relationship from an element property sheet, I can double click on a relation. In this dialog, I'll need to specify a target element. I can use any pre existing element or create an element here in this dialog. There are two ways to create a new element in this dialog. I can click the New button or double-click on a folder. I'll double-click on the folder again and name my element Heat Water. Then I'll click OK twice to create the relationship. I can also create relationships by dropping one element on top of another element in the element list. I'll create another function using the new element icon in the toolbar. This icon will create a new element in whatever class you are currently viewing. I'll name my element Pump Water. Now I'll drop Pump Water onto Making Coffee. Core prompts me with the valid relations for this class. I'll accept the default and click OK. We've already explored three places to create elements and two methods of creating relationships from a data centric perspective. Let's switch over to a diagram view and learn a few more. I'll first select my Making Coffee element. Then, the EFFBD tab at the bottom of the screen to view the EFFBD of this element. Note that any targets of the decomposed by relationship will appear on this view. Since we've already created two targets, they are shown here. I'll create a new element by dragging New Node onto the diagram and dropping it where I want to see the element. This method creates a generically named element. I'll right click on it and select Rename Element. I'll rename it Wait for Coffee to Pass from Filter to Carafe. Although I only appeared to be creating an element, I actually created a relationship at the same time. Anytime I drop an element on the background of a diagram, I am creating a relationship between the parent element of the diagram, in this case making coffee, and the element I dropped on, Wait for Coffee. Exactly which relationship I am creating is specific to the diagram. Refer to the Help menu for diagram-specific information. To do this, click Help, Help Contents. Then, double-click on the Views book to open it. Here, you'll find complete descriptions of all the diagrams available in Core. I can drag any element onto the diagram to create relationships from any of the three tabs in the diagram palette. Let's click on the All Entities tab to create a new requirement. I'll call it Heat Water to 195 degrees. Next, I'll drag that element onto the diagram and drop it on top of Heat Water. Core prompts me with the valid relations between functions and requirements. I'll accept the default and click OK. Notice that even though I created the relationship in a diagram, the new requirement is not shown here. This is because requirements aren't shown on EFFBDs. If I open a property sheet of the heat water element by double clicking on it, I can see the basis of relationship was created. We've shown you five methods of creating elements and four methods of creating relationships. This video focuses on the methods most valuable and relevant to a new core user. As you become a more advanced user, you'll likely find many more methods. This concludes the overview of methods of creating elements and relationships. To learn more about using Core, go back to our screencast page and view the rest of the Getting Started collection.